What is up, everybody? Welcome back to the channel, episode 26 of the Minnesota Vikings franchise, and we are in week one, about to take on the Green Bay Packers to open things up, and we are playing at U.S. Bank Stadium. What a way to open the season up. Now, before we get to that, though, there are a lot of extras. I wouldn't say a lot. A few extras that I want to get to. I changed my mind again. I made a comment last video saying that I couldn't keep up with all of the teams, right? I didn't want to stay on them. Well, once I simmed to week one and once I ended the video, I looked around the league. I looked around, you know, I'm looking for, you know, guys that were cut. See if we can pick up a few guys extra that I think are better for the team, which I did find a couple. And then also to see what the other teams have done to see what we can expect from the Madden AI system. And I didn't like it. I didn't like it one bit. So I went through and I made a profile for every single team once again. And now I'm sticking to it though. I'm not backing off of it. I'm not changing my mind. This is it. I have a profile on every team. I'm gonna do it this way and I will figure out the rest as it comes. So with that being said, there are some things that I did for the teams to fix them a little bit. We're gonna go over a few updates as well, and then we'll get into more of the little changes before we get to the game. So first, let's do the around the league update that I have not done for, I think since last last season, maybe even before that. It's been a while. Seems like it anyway. So as you can see here, we have some new stories to look at. First one up in your top left here, some of these stories are coming from the Madden story generator that I'm using to help liven up this franchise a little bit. And this one is one of them. The top one here from Kari Willis. The strong safety for the Bucks, Kari Willis, is holding out for a new contract. He's currently in his second year on a three-year deal. It's going to be interesting to see how this plays out because the Bucks actually just drafted a safety about a year ago. And there may be a chance that he could take over Willis' spot and the Bucks could look to move on from him instead of giving him a new contract. He is 28 years old. He's probably looking for his one last good deal before, you know, you hit that 30 wall. And now our second story is Devontae Parker, wide receiver for the Miami Dolphins. He has been getting overlooked by both Jalen Waddell and Will Fuller, who has really exploded onto the scene for the Dolphins the last couple of years. And we saw that firsthand in our game. He asked to get more targets, and the Dolphins responded by trading him to the Houston Texans, where he will be one of the top three receivers. He will be playing on the outside, allowing Brandon Cooks to go into the slot. So hopefully that'll help Devontae Parker. We'll see. Maybe we play them. We do. Week three, we play them. Look at that. So we'll get to see if that plays out. Our third story is another one of the Madden story generator, which I really love this about it. Defensive end Derek Barnett of the Los Angeles Chargers has decided that he is going to hang it up after losing his love for the game and all of the stuff that comes with it in between Sundays. That is going to actually pave the way for one of the younger guys to get a shot to start this year. A couple of trades to go over as well. The Broncos looking to shore up their defensive line ahead of week one decided to make a trade with the Jaguars for defensive tackle Devon Hamilton. The Jaguars have already accumulated different parts, and Hamilton was sort of the odd man out. He will be the starting nose tackle for the Broncos, and now that really makes things a lot better for Denver up front, who previously was starting Tristan Hill. This may have the Patriots next to it, but this is also the Texans really shoring up this offense to go for a run before Jameis Winston starts falling off. They make a move with the Patriots, getting tight end Jonu Smith, former Titan. In exchange, they send Charles Amonahue who was their defensive end and probably still would have been, but since they changed to a 43, he as well is sort of the odd man out and is not really having a position right now with the team. The Patriots, however, they needed one. Both teams get a starter-worthy player, and hopefully it works out for both. The Raiders confirm that second-year quarterback Jerry Mikliot, who was drafted very high last year, will get to start week one. Derek Carr will be the backup, and there is no plans on them looking back as... Since this offseason, Derek Carr seems to have regressed a little bit, and now Mikleod is the superior quarterback. And now a couple of contract situations. Running back Joe Mixon of the Cincinnati Bengals in the final year of his contract, and neither him or the team will say anything about an extension being discussed, anything happening. So 
also have to remember the Bengals drafted Perry Brock last year, and he did have some injury concerns coming into the season, but he has shown that he's got some flashes, and he is rating, his rating is jumping up. Something to really keep an eye on to see if Mixon stays with Cincinnati or if he is going to be looking elsewhere come the end of the season, or who knows, even before the trade, the trade deadline, depending on how the Bengals perform. And this one has everything to do with team success. Longtime Ram Aaron Donald wants out of LA. The team went 4 and 13 last year, and he feels that they didn't put any effort into getting better during the offseason and does not want to spend the twilight years of his career playing for a team that is not contending. So those are some of the stories that we're looking at right now. We'll keep tabs on the ones that have future things at play, like the Joe Mixon situation, the Aaron Donald situation, and see how things are going. Um, again, this is something I really want to bring to the franchise. I want to be able to add these different dynamic storylines, and hopefully you guys enjoy it, and I'm not wasting my time because it takes a long time. Okay, now on to the things that I did for the Vikings. Not many, but I did sign two more players, and I'm not going to lie, one of them is a receiver. Look, I, I can't help it, okay? I like receivers. I like running backs. Who doesn't? Who, who doesn't like those positions, right? I mean, you, you never know. What if three of our guys get hurt tomorrow? I don't know. Do, do you know? No, you don't. So I don't care. I got extras. So the first guy I signed was Jeremiah Rutherford, running back that was drafted by the Jaguars two seasons ago. They cut him during the cut, cut down days in preseason because they drafted another guy. So I was like, well, this guy is better than the two guys we were looking at in preseason. And I have a roster spot now. So let's go ahead and bring him on. And I did. The reason I brought him on was because I decided to move Benji Barnett down to the practice squad where he belongs. There he will actually develop more than him sitting at third quarterback. So that's what I did with him. And then I found this guy, Jason Johnson, sitting in the free agents as well. It turns out he was also cut. Now I don't remember who drafted him because I just, I don't remember everybody. I just remember seeing Rutherford and Johnson was just sitting there and I'm like, I can't, I can't not pick this guy up, right? I mean, look at his stats, pretty good stats, pretty nice. And he's 6'3". So I was forced to, I had to, I had to do it. So that's our seven guys. I won't sign anymore. Okay, I'm lying. I can't promise that. I don't know what's gonna happen. But that is our receiving core. Garrett Bradbury might look a little different if you pay attention and if you do pay attention and think that he does look different, his overall is lower. His overall is lower because during the, the story generator poll or role that I do, Garrett Bradbury was one of the culprits of the lazy off season. So I had to take down some of his attributes. Now he is down to a 76 without any of the morale boosts or the T or the, you know, the coaching tree boosts. So now this is, Starting to pave the way a little bit for Mahone to get an earlier shot at starting. Which, honestly, even though I drafted Mahone, is not exactly something I was happy about because I don't think that he's ready to start. And I thought we had a really, really good line. And now Bradbury, even though he didn't lose a lot, I mean, some of his, some of all of his stuff is now below 80s for the most part. So that's going to be something that is probably going to affect us. We'll see. Hopefully not too bad. There was also a lot of, of things that happened during that. I have a whole list of them. I'm going to keep the list, but I'm not going to go over all of them. For one, a lot of the players that get that are usually lower end players. They're not superstar players already. There's probably a good 70 of them that I had to go through and do. And I don't feel like doing all of them right now. And I also don't think you guys feel like listening to them because half of them don't matter. So what I'll do is if we are playing a team and they have somebody that you know had a boost or a dump or whatever the case is, I will mention it. Last but not least is I did want to just take a, a quick peek at the scouting and the prospects because I did set our scouts for the season and I have the draft class uploaded that I mentioned to you guys last video. Thanks to uh, Mitchy Boy Gaming that you, like I said, you guys, if you watch the videos, you probably see him in the, in the comments from time to time. Um, he has worked really hard on this and I'm really thankful for him doing that out of just wanting to see me add a little extra to the channel. So thank you to Mitchie. And uh, this is the class that we have right now. 
We will be going over all of these players as the season wears on about stories. He has come up with stories for them as well. And um, I have my areas picked out for what we are going to target. You can see there's a handful of good quarterbacks. And there's stories all the way down to, I believe, uh, Tyler Rivers, if I'm not mistaken. If you guys want to, you know, pause and look at some of these prospects, I'm just going to sort of go through them a little bit. I'm not going to uh, spend too much time going over this right now because I'm still trying to figure out how exactly I want to showcase the prospects and get the stories down pat because he is, it is still a work in progress. It's a lot of work, you know. This is one of the guys that he he was I, I, he must have put his own little spin on some of these players because I don't think I've ever seen a linebacker 267 pounds 65. This guy looks like he should be playing DM, but he's uh, sitting at middle linebacker Tyler Macheski. That's a guy we might have to keep an eye on considering we are going to be looking probably for some linebackers again comes off season unless something crazy happens to the guys we have. A couple of good corners. Not too heavy on the safeties at free safety. A couple of solid guys at strong safety. So yeah, that is the prospects. And this is what I have set right now for us. And I honestly, I set this before, I, I set this before really even looking through the class. I just, I looked at where the strengths were and what I thought we were gonna need. So my biggest point of emphasis is gonna be safety, right? We have Xavier Woods and now we have Cameron Curl. I don't know how long Woods is going to stay, but I don't think we have any solid guys to that we can really build on at safety yet. I like Metellus and I like Bynum, but they're both already 25 or above, which means that they have a limited uh, ceiling. You know, they, they're not going to dev up that high. And the chances of us starting them this year before they lose another key year is slim. I double down on linebackers because like I just mentioned, I feel like it's going to be an emphasis for us. And I really need us to find the next Eric Kendricks. You know, I want to have a guy like that. In all honesty, I want to find a guy sort of like the linebacker I have in the RFL named DeMarco Landel. Now, some of you might not even know who the heck that is, which you might soon because I do plan on doing some more content revolving around my time in the RFL because it's been a very big motivator for this channel as a whole and it just is such a great community and a great you know product that they that we put out so i'm on the hunt for a linebacker this offseason i also put in for left tackle right tackle because brian o'neill is getting up there and i also put in for wide receiver because i love wide receivers and i'm not sure if there's many strengths elsewhere that we would really need now that by no means says we're going to draft those positions because like you know, you guys know, you never know what's going to happen. You could get to the draft and the players at that position could be taken and you have to take somebody else or you're going to have to drop down. So there's no guarantees. This is just what I want to start to focus on considering what the draft class looks to be strong in, you know, what the consensus is for what I think we might be looking for in the off season. So I, th I think this is going to be really cool because now I can't just rely on my own knowledge of Madden AI draft classes. I have to rely on somebody else's input and I have to rely on really the drafting I, there's no, and the stories there's nothing else i can do you know before and there's still going to ring true on some positions because i know he's not going to touch a 400 person draft class but i can't just look at a player and say well i know that madden usually makes these guys good because of these you know two or three things that i'm seeing i don't know if it was a player he edited or not some of them are very apparent like when they have a different face that madden doesn't provide but at the end of the day this is going to make the drafting much more fun and you know more random for me so i'm really looking forward to this the very last thing we got to do is we just got to take a look at green bay and see how this team is looking this year since we haven't seen him obviously in quite some time jordan love is still hanging on as starting quarterback aaron jones of course still the running back they drafted jamal foster after letting go of aj Dillon, who of course as we saw is now with the washington football team and then they have mac davis still who they drafted two seasons ago receivers are all pretty much the same. Michael Pittman Jr., Nikhil Harry, 
Alan Lazard, Amari Rogers, Keith Flowers, and Nick Johnson. Justin Stewart is turning into quite a nice tight end for them. He was their first round pick two seasons ago. Still have a pretty solid line. They did draft Lamar Hammond. That was their first round pick this year. So now they have a fresh new tackle to work with alongside Bakhtiari and the rest of the guys. Draymond Jones still the starter. Grady Jarrett. Oh, he's hurt. Okay, so Grady Jarrett is hurt for this game. Oh, boy. Which means it's going to be on Thomas Poole, or probably just in generals, to fill in the, the spot. Kenny Clark, of course, still here. I hate this guy. He is so good. Rashawn Gary. Lamar Hunter is getting really good. Man, too bad he can't start. 22 years old, 77 overall. Emmanuel Bags is also up to an 80 now. Wow, that's that's pretty cool to see. And then Ethan Merritt still here. They have drafted a lot of good linebackers. Merritt, Bags, and Hunter in the last two years. It's a solid uh, linebacker core. Jair Alexander, still the guy here. Eric Stokes, Andrew Hankins, Devontae Clark, and Chris Price, both rookies that they drafted this year. Surprised Eric Stokes hasn't gone up at all. He had a really promising rookie year in real life, and I expected him to sort of do, you know, do the same. I just, you know, when we play the Packers, it always seems that this team is playing good. So it's just weird, I guess, to see that he's still in the below 80. Darnell Savage, still a beast. Adrian Amos, still playing at 31. He's only 31. Why did I think he was already 30 when he joined the Packers? Hmm. All right. Now that I have finished talking you guys' ears off, let's go ahead and get to this game and see what this new team looks like in some real action. We're gonna start things off with our throwback uniforms this year. Not sure if I've even done one of these yet, throwback uniforms or anything aside from our own, you know, normal uniform. So I figured let's go ahead and start it. It's week one, it's against the Packers. We're in Minnesota. Let's see what we can do as we start off on offense. First play, handoff to Madison up the middle. Gain of about four yards. Nice little run up the middle. I wish it would have jumped out to the left side. It looked like there was some running room there, but it is what it is. Glover, back from injury during preseason, is in the backfield. And he's going to get the second carry. Breaking free of one tackle out across to the 33-yard line. Short gain of three. Rashawn Gary looks like he's there to clean up the mess. Draymond Jones as well. Now we're looking at third and three. Glover in the backfield again. Hopkins to throw it. Looking to set up the screen. And he gets rid of it to Glover, who's got a lane of blockers. Slipping off of tackles. Pushed out of bounds at the 48-yard line. Nice run there. Finally see a screen working. So happy. So happy about that. Close to midfield. Madison checks back into the game. Hand off Madison. Oh, man. He runs right into Draymond Jones who came right through the line. I have a feeling we're gonna try to pass it on this one here. No, we are gonna run it again, and oh man, Glover gets just all sorts of animated tied to the line. And now it's another loss of one, Rashawn Gary this time. Putting ourselves in really bad territories and situations as we come out third and 13 now. Hopkins has gotta throw it. Let's it go, and not even close to a first down, throwing it too far to the sideline and out of bounds. Out comes Jordan Love for the Green Bay Packers. Had himself a decent year last year, surprisingly, for his overall. Uh, I believe it was 33 touchdowns and like 16 interceptions. 34 touchdowns, 16 interceptions. But either way, leading this team still. Let's see how he does this season. I'm curious to see if the team is gonna keep rolling with him if they're gonna try to draft somebody. First and 10. Love back to pass it. And we're gonna fire it off and he gets a completion right away to Alan Lazard out to the 24. First and 10 as they are not waiting a second. This time they're going to go to Aaron Jones. Jones plugged immediately by Devontae Coleman and Cameron Curl. Speaking of Coleman, I made a couple of changes. I made sure to get him in. I need to see this guy play. And I also gave A.J. Alexander the nod at middle linebacker over Demario Davis. And a f shot over the middle. And speaking of A.J. Alexander, he makes the play, forcing the incompletion. Third and nine now. Blitz is coming. We pick it up. They pick it up nicely. And, of course, we give up the first. And then also a looks like a face mask. Oh, perfect. Perfect. That's what we should do. Give up the face mask after giving up a 15-yard gain. Good job, Cameron Curl. 
After we shoot ourselves in the foot, it's first and 10 for Green Bay at the 39. Hand off to Jones. Jones sneaks through the first line and brought down by Daniil Hunter at the 35. Three receivers all split off to the left side. Love, quick drop, lets it go, and he's got a man, and he's hit hard, and the ball is recovered by Daniil Hunter. Who forced that one? It was A.J. Alexander. Okay. A.J. with the turnover. That's a big play for us on defense. Alexander showing why. I let him start. Hand off to Madison. Madison's got a clear lane off the right side. Inside the four, across the 40 to the 45 yard line. Nice job. Pickup of about 20 yards, it looks like. Another first down. And another handoff to Madison. Madison up the middle. Another gain of four for him. Out to the 49. Four carries, 22 yards. Can't complain off of that. A couple of tough runs, but that big one sort of averaged his average back out. Second and six. Glover checks in, and he's going to take the handoff. And he's got a lane down inside the 40 to the 35-yard line. Big running there for Glover. He is going to be a huge factor for us this year. I really want to see him get involved more because, obviously, by the end of this season, he's probably going to end up being the starting back unless Madison goes off. Madison takes the pitch play, plowing his way forward, gain of a couple. Hopkins to throw it. Blitz is coming. We pick it up nicely, and then they finally get through, and the sack is made. And it's just in generals, the man I just said before the game was going to be filling in for the injured Grady Jarrett, getting the pressure and the sack as he comes right through the middle, it looked like. Yeah, working against Lake and Tomlinson. And now, because of third and 20, we have to spread it out. We keep putting ourselves already. It's two straight drives we're putting ourselves back here. Hopkins just chucks this thing up deep, and it is intercepted by Eric Stokes. Horrible play call there. Really was. Really, really was. You toss it up to K.J. Osborne. Like, no offense to K.J. Osborne, but if you're going to throw a 50-50 ball, I think you should probably throw it to Justin Jefferson or, you know, I don't know, you know, maybe, you know, maybe Derek Wilcox, the 6'5 guy we have. But, no, we throw it to the shortest receiver that starts. Turnover apiece. Green Bay comes back out on offense. Love, quick drop, fires it off to Jones in the flats. Jeremy Chin there to bring him down. For a loss of three. A big play there by Jeremy Chin. I don't know if it was the pressure that was coming or what, but he did not look like he wanted to throw that ball to him. And it, it had to happen. Oh, yeah. Devontae Coleman caused that play. Did you see him hurdle the, the offensive lineman? That's why I wanted Coleman to start. I think he brings some nastiness to this D-line, even if his overall isn't say he should be. Second and 13 now. Back to pass. Blitz coming. He has to get rid of it again. And we are there again. Jeremy Chin this time causing the pressure. Cameron Curl bringing him down at the line. Third and 13. Can we get off the field here? Love steps up. And he's going to take the sack. Daniil Hunter back to the 13-yard line. We do get a really good punt, though. And then we're back at the three-yard line. Let's see if we can capitalize on at least the field position here. Come on, guys. Oh, no. What was that? It was like Devontae Coleman was supposed to get the tackle, but Madden didn't let him, so then Aaron Jones just fell down a couple yards later. Weird. Second and five. Jones, he's looking deep down the right side, one-on-one, -on -one, and it's it caught by Nikhil Harry, and he's down inside the 35 to the 31. Come on now, let's go. Man, Nikhil Harry just... Was that Mike Hughes? Let's see here. Yeah, it was. Mike Hughes just got destroyed. Nikhil Harry. Wow. He just dominated. Mike Hughes didn't even try to go for it. Oh, he did, but it was a pathetic attempt. What a horrible attempt. Where are you going, guy? He's just like, well, if he if he doesn't catch it, I'm gonna catch it. We just can't we just can't stop from being bad sometimes. Hand off to Jones. Big lane for him off the left side. Trying to break through the defenders, and he's down to the 24-yard line. They're going to spread us out here. A minute 40 to go in the first half. Love. Quick fires over the middle. Michael Pittman makes the catch down to the 14-yard line, working against Connor McElroy. Pittman, three catches, 44 yards now. I love how we have a better quarterback and better, like, skill position players aside from Aaron Jones, and yet they're running the same book we're running, just worse as they score a touchdown. First and 10 for Green Bay to open up the third quarter. 
And we are on the verge of getting blown out here if we don't do something fast. Jordan Love throws it to the right side, caught by Stewart, falls out of bounds at the 23-yard line. We're letting Jordan Love look like an absolute monster. 13 of 16, 190 yards, I think, and a touchdown. Yeah, excellent. Second and four. Under pressure, Love gets hit. We at least get got that going for us so far. We have been able to dial up some decent pressure. It's just our coverage has not been the greatest. Third and four. Quick pump, uh, play action. And a pass to Nikhil Harry, who gets the first down again. Nikhil Harry's been a problem every time we face these guys. Love looking all the time in the world, and he throws it to Aaron Jones, who stays on his feet and gets out across the 40 to the 43 as they are continuing to just carve us up right now. Empty set. They've been passing it all day. Why go to the run game? Just throw it on us. We know we can't stop it. First and 10. Love going to throw it quickly, and he's got a wide open man again. It's not like Alan Lazard is, you know, a 77 overall working against our X-Factor corner. Love, oh, somehow that doesn't affect his throw at all. You, you're kidding me right now. We have two guys back there hitting him. It doesn't affect his throw, and then that animation for a touchdown. Okay, after giving up that huge touchdown, and now we are about to go down by 21 points. Yep, look at that. We didn't cover anybody. Honestly, considering putting Kellen Mond in if Taylor Hopkins doesn't do something on this drive because we haven't seen anything from Hopkins. Handoff to Glover, nothing there. Kenny Clark is ready for it. Glover has been one of the lone bright spots today. 10 carries, 45 yards for us on offense. We really haven't had anything else to talk about. Hopkins lets it go, and he's got Derek Wilcox out across the 35 to the 38-yard line. Nice play. Wilcox finally getting a catch here in the fourth quarter. We've passed the ball 17 times, and yet we have not a single shred of evidence to show for it. First and 10. Hopkins to throw it, and it is caught by Jefferson out to the 48-yard line. Another throw and another catch. This time, Timmy Peoples finally getting himself a catch. His first one of the day, second in inches. I mean, at least can we end on a bright note? Can we at least try to do something here offensively for the rest of the quarter? Second in inches. Hopkins throws it, caught, out of bounds, Irv Smith, down to the 36-yard line. Well, good thing is we are probably going to get a chance to see some backups play today. Hopkins looking, got to throw the ball, finally does a wide open. Timmy Peoples streaking up the sideline, and we get our first touchdown, and it is to the rookie, Timmy Peoples. Finally, something good happening to this offense. Just a crossing route, working against, it looked like Eric Stokes. Alexander tried to play catch up, but by that point, Timmy Peoples, he's got the speed. You are not going to catch him. All right, so we finally got something good to go for us on offense. We don't have the extra point because we went for two and missed, but we did get a touchdown. And there we go, a nice play by Markel Ware, who also had the sack on the last drive. He's a guy that I'm really excited about. I moved him to defensive tackle, of course, if you didn't watch the offseason video. Drafted him in the first round. I just felt that we needed more of a uh, pass rush type of guy there. And so far today, he has been playing really, really well. A sack, and of course now that play. He's had a few others as well, but nothing that stood out that much. And now second and 14. A handoff to Jones, and Devontae Coleman, the other guy that I'm excited about, makes the play on him. Another loss of one. Okay, here we go. Third and 15. Now these are the plays where we are just giving it up no matter what. Like, we're giving it up like it's prom night on these downs. Come on now, guys. And there we go. Finally. Coming back out on offense, we finally got something positive going for us last drive with the long touchdown to Timmy Peoples. Can we get some? Can we build off of that here? And no, we can't. Oh, maybe we can. And great play by Hopkins and Jefferson, really. Turning a play that could have been a negative into a positive gain of five. We don't have much time to work with, though, so I'm not too, you know, confident. Short pass over the middle. K.J. Osborne makes the catch to the 41. First down. Split back formation, Glover and Madison. What do we do here? We are going to throw it. Hopkins has got all day to throw, and he dumps it down. 
that's just great. Those are the kind of plays that waste time and waste drives because we got we had like 12 seconds to throw the ball and you throw it for two yards. Second and four, Hopkins back, getting pushed away from Derisaw and he finally, he dumps it down again. This time Madison though has to make a play and he does, getting it down across midfield and gets us another first down. Hopkins, I don't know if you're just not, if they're just covering us that well or, if, or what's going on, they must be. Back to pass it again. Pressure coming. He has to dump it off. And Glover pushed out of bounds at the line of scrimmage. There is a flag down. I think they're going to get him for, yeah, roughing the passer. Well, dude came flying in and still tackled him even after he threw the ball. I don't know if you guys saw that on the bottom of the screen, but he did. So, I mean, hey, if you're going to do that kind of stuff, you're going to get a flag. First and 10. Hopkins lets it go quickly to the right side, and it is caught by Derek Wilcox working against Eric Stokes. A really good catch in traffic down to the 17. First and 10. Handoff, Glover, and Glover down to the 15, gain of two. Oh, Hopkins calling audibles here. Let's see what's going to happen. We're going to throw it. Hopkins lets it go towards the end zone, and it is caught by Osborne down to the five. And now we are really starting to see a rhythm here from Taylor Hopkins. Can we get on the board again? Throwing it for Jefferson. Touchdown. He th threw it where only Jefferson could catch it, and Jefferson makes the catch on the sideline, and just like that, now we are close to being sort of back in this game. All right, so we're not going to win this game. But we can at least make it a, a decent-looking game if we can score on this drive here. Hopkins to throw it. Hopkins, man, come on. Finally lets it go. And it is caught by K.J. Osborne out to the 28-yard line. Of course, we waited until the garbage time to start playing well. First and 10. Dumps it off to Madison, who has a, wow, wide open. Nobody covering over on the sideline as Emmanuel Bags just cannot keep up with him. And we're going to get it down across midfield for another first down. Now it almost looks like that extra, that two-point conversion really messed us up. Going for the screen, and we get a second screen that works. I'm not sure why Glover turned back to the defenders when he had a clear 20 yards to the le over to the left side, but hey, what, who am I? And another catch by Jefferson down to the 30. 32 to be precise. Hopkins to throw it again. Hopkins chucks it to the end zone, and it is caught for a garbage time touchdown to Justin Jefferson. Well, at least we get some good stats, right? Okay, so after that game, I mean, obviously not, a, not the way we wanted things to go for our first game. Uh, we did see some nice stuff from the offense in the second half. Well, more like the fourth quarter. It was just garbage time, so I don't want to put too much emphasis on that. Bottom line is Taylor Hopkins has to step up. We we can't be going through these games and having Hopkins running around like that every week. That's that's a recipe for a really bad season. So we are going to keep working on it, and we'll see what happens next week. But as for this video, that's all we got. I appreciate you guys watching. As always, please leave a comment. Give me a like. And if you're not already, please consider subscribing. And um, I'll see you guys next time.